Today we're going to go over the one strategy that every option trader needs to master. Okay. And, and before we start, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. Uh, Options Authority, we're solely an educator providing training on the theory of analyzing financial markets. We're not a registered investment advisor. So we don't give a, a specific advice to an individual on what to do in the marketplace. Okay. As far as risk is determined, only you can determine what level of risk is appropriate for you. You know what kind of money you have, what you, what do you can afford to put in the marketplace. Uh, if you're looking for just the basics, uh, the Options Clearing Corporation, the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, and FINRA all have little booklets that give you at least the, the basics of it. Okay? And I just want to tell you that we at Options Authority um, we may own positions and are trading the securities mentioned in the information that we provide, but all employees of Options Authority are prohibited from engaging in any transaction that directly or indirectly competes with the known interests of our subscribers. Okay, so we're, we're not going to uh, have a position and say, oh, you got to buy this one so you can take it off our hands. All right, good. Okay, Reed was uh, kind enough to tell a little bit about my background. Once again, I'm the co-founder and head of mentoring at Options Authority. Okay, um, and then Steve Foss, the legendary balloonist, uh, after I had about six years as a runner, phone clerk, everything else, uh, learned a, just a ton from the, everybody around me. Uh, I was able to take on, uh, with backing from Steve, a three-year deal, and I was able to turn 20000 into over $2 million in that three-year period of time. Okay, and the reason why, because I was prepared, I knew what I was doing. Okay. I'm a graduate from Marquette University, um, and I've formally been teaching options trading since 2006. Actually, it's been since about uh, 1978 I've been actually teaching, too, because uh, whoever got hired a week after me, I would teach them what I knew, and that's kind of the way it was on the trading floor. So, But formally, I've been teaching, uh, doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring, teaching people how to trade options since 2006. So almost 10 years of doing that and still doing trading on my own. Okay, so one thing we want to find out, what is this strategy that we're talking about? Okay. Um, the strategy is diagonal spreads. Okay. And It's the one that you really want, okay? So what are diagonal spreads, okay? We're going to find out when we should use them, what their benefits are, and when is the best time to use them, okay? They're not all pat answers like anything with option trading. It's not always specific pat answers to any of these questions, but uh, we'll do our best, okay? Okay, what is a diagonal spread? All right. That's when we sell the same um, type put or call. Okay, so it's either going to be both options are going to be put or both options are going to be a call involved in the spread. Okay, so before I get into that, I just want to just a little basics of options to show you why these diagonal spreads are really important. Okay, let's say you buy 100 shares of a stock it's trading at 100, okay? You have to come up with 10K for that, right? $10,000, or you could buy some 100 calls, okay? You could buy 10 of those, all right? And they're trading at two bucks, okay? So that's 200, $2 per share. Each option represents 100 shares, so that's 200 times 10. It's a 2K investment. So you're controlling 10 times the number of shares for one-fifth the price, okay? So that's 50 times the leverage, okay? That's a wonderful thing, all right? So you would think you just want to buy options all the time, okay? The negative part of long options is they're a wasting asset, okay? And that's what we're going to go into here is how do we get that control where we can make money when it makes a move, okay? without suffering the losses of this wasting asset, okay? So, so we're buying the same type put or call option, 
we sell the same, well, well, we'll say for now we'll just use calls, okay? So we sell a call in one expiration cycle, and we're going to buy a call in another expiration cycle, okay? Um, and it's going to be a different strike price, okay? So we're going to sell in one strike price and then buy the same call in another expiration cycle, but with a different strike price, okay? So a straight out time spread is you're buying the same strike price but different expiration cycles. This is different ex a vertical spread. It's the same expiration cycle but different strike prices. Okay, here's a, here's a combination of the both, okay, where it's different strike prices and different expiration cycles, okay? Now, when should we use them? Okay. Remember I said it's a wasting asset? Options are a wasting asset. Calls and puts both are. Okay. Because it's the time value that's embedded in that option premium that is ticking away constantly. So if you just use options, straight long options, the likelihood of you being successful as a trader is not very good. You better be right on every time. Okay. You could even go long calls stock can go up and you still don't make money because of the time value in your option precluded that from happening. Okay? So it's a normal time that options are going to, options normally waste away. Okay? So, so we don't want to do it, you don't want to sell an option where there's news events. Okay, why do you not want to do that? Because the normal decay that happens in options doesn't happen if there's a, a bigger uh, event coming up. Okay? So you wouldn't want to sell options on corn futures if the uh, crop report is coming out next week. Okay? Because when you sell options, you want the option you sell to go to zero. All right? And it's not going to go, not only is it not going to go to zero, it's going to barely decay until that big announcement takes place. And in some situations, it actually rises with the passage of time, the value of an option wealth, because of the nervousness approaching that big news event. Okay? So you don't want to sell it, and you want to, and preferably, although not always, news events are happening with the option that you buy. Okay? Because the option you, you buy is not going to decay as rapidly um, because of that news event, okay? And obviously that's priced into the options already, but even with that, it's still advantageous to follow that um, rule of thumb. And lastly, you want to trade stocks that are volatile but not too volatile, okay? And as you see as we go, go along this route, um, teach you about this, you're going to find out if it's too volatile, it's going to be out of the range of profitability. Okay, so we don't want that to happen. All right. Okay, and once again, here's the key right here. The time value in the option that we are selling, okay, it's decaying faster than the option we are buying. Okay? Now, one way to look at that is um, options, an option is like an ice cube. The time decay in an option is like an ice cube. Okay? You put an ice cube on the counter, take it out of the freezer, you put it on the counter, and you, at the first five seconds, you see a little bit of sweat on the ice cube. All right? And you go in the other room, you come back, and all of a sudden it starts melting at a much more rapid rate. Okay, that's the way it is with options. Okay, it's not a constant rate of decay. So in other words, if it's an out of the money option, and there's 30 days left, and it's a dollar eighty, okay, it doesn't decrease at six cents a day between now and then. Period. Each day 
it increases the amount of its decay. Okay, so it decays a little bit more rapidly every single day. All right. Um, so we want to set it up where we're the option we're selling is going to be the nearer term. The option we're buying is going to be further term. Okay. So that's the benefit of these diagonal spreads. The other thing we have a defined risk. Okay. Um, and the defined risk is a lot less than if you bought a thousand shares of stock, for instance, or short a thousand shares of stock. Okay. And the spread can make money in either direction, depending on how we set it up. Um, and even if it can only make money in a certain direction, um, in a certain way, we can make adjustments. Okay. That's the key. We have a basis of which we can make adjustments. All right. If you just buy calls or sell calls, okay, can it, buy calls only makes money if it goes up, sell calls only if it goes down. Okay. Okay, so here's some of the, when's the best time to use them. Okay. Um, once again, we want to um, up, upcoming earnings reports. Okay, so now we're actually getting into that territory right now. Um, April, that we got the January, April, July, October earnings cycle, of which uh, the implied value, the premium level for options that will be around, will still be around after the earnings report is over with. Okay, are going to have a much higher implied volatility. Okay, uh, takeover stocks is another one. Um, the particular type we're going to, there are many different types of diagonal stocks that kind we're covering today that wouldn't be in place. Um, and then we would look at the differences in the implied volatility between the expiration cycles. Okay. And as you get to become more expert at this, you're going to take a look at an options trading platform. And right away, you, you won't even need to be told when the uh, earnings cycle is. You'll be able to determine it. Okay, at least within an expiration cycle, you'll be able to determine it. Okay. All right. So I told you a little while ago that a diagonal trade was two different trades on the same stock. A short call paired with a long call. Okay. Okay, so this is it. One half is a short call. Okay. This is where we're the beneficiary. Remember that wasting asset? Okay. This is when we're going to be a beneficiary of that. Okay. The short call. Okay. But if the market takes off, goes up to the upside, who cares about how much premium is wasting away? Right, if if the trade's going right up in your face, it doesn't make any difference. Okay. And that's why we pair it with a long call here. Okay. So I'm gonna go run through a couple of sample trades. So get out a piece of paper and write this stuff down. Okay. All right. So we're going to start out, and here's a short call, okay? And why is it a short call? Because it's a short person, right? Little kids are short, okay? Um, so we're going to start out selling 20 of the XYZ Feb 47 and a half calls at $2.50, okay? So we're selling 20 of them, $2.50 per share. Um, it's a, okay. So, um, 20 times 250 is going to be a, uh, so that's 5,000, right? Okay, so it's move that over to there. That's $250 times 20 is 5,000, okay? That happens at 47.50 or lower, okay? Because at 47.50, anybody who's long these 47 and a half calls, they're not going to exercise that call. We'll just go out in the open market and buy the stock at 
It's only when there's an advantage to exercising the call the exercise. So if it's a 48, that's a 50 cent advantage per share, right? $50 for each call you own. So you're definitely going to exercise the stock there. All right? So this position is strictly a bearish position, right? The further it goes down, the better off you are. Okay. And the break-even point, okay, if we set if we're short these 47 and a half calls, that means when you're short an option, you have obligation. You're obligated to sell the stock at 4750. Okay, so you're gonna your basis for selling that is gonna be 4750. But the 250, okay, that you're also getting for that raises your basis to 50. All right, okay. So your break-even point is 50. So anywhere between 4750 and 50 you're going to be um, still making money, um, but making less and less until you hit 50, and then above there you lose money. Okay, break, you break even at 50, above there you lose. And your maximum possible loss, since you're just making short the call, unlimited. Okay? So you don't like that for a couple of reasons. One reason is you don't want to lose unlimited amounts of money. The other reason is the margin man. Okay? If you do something, you just make it short an option, the margin eats up so much of your account that uh, you better hope you're right and better hope it happens quickly. Okay. So rather than that, it's better to spread your position. Okay. And here we are, the 47.50. Okay. And you can see that uh, you can see the 4750 right there. We get that constant five thousand dollar profit. Okay, so the advantage of um, just outright shorting stock versus selling the call is, as it goes all the way to zero, you make money. Here it's 4750, and that's it. That's all you make. Just to make the amount of, that you shorted it at. Okay. All right, so now here's the second half of our equation, okay? And this time we're going to buy 24 of the March 49 calls of 250, all right? All right? Our maximum possible profit is unlimited, okay? Anytime we buy an option, if we buy a call, the call can go to infinity, right? So we're make, we can make just unlimited amounts of money. If we buy a put, you can make unlimited amounts until the stock hits zero. Obviously, if the corporation owes billions of dollars, shareholders are on the hook for it. That's what a corporation is. Okay. So calls have unlimited profitability. Puts they might not have unlimited, but if the stock goes from 130 to zero, that's a lot. Okay. Um, obviously, it's strictly bullish position. Okay, there's no way if you just make it line the call, you can make money if the stock's going down. It just doesn't work that way. All right? But what this does, it gives you the right to own the stock at 49. So 49 is your basis, okay? And then you have to add the $2.50 that you pay for it, for having that ability to own the stock at 49. Okay? So you add that. And then your break-even point is 51.50. So anywhere above 51.50 in this, you can just make unlimited amounts of money. Okay. What's the maximum we can lose? Okay, that 250. Once again, we move that over. That's 250 dollars. Okay. Quick way of looking at that: 250 times 20 would be 5k, right? And then another four times 250 would be 1k. So that'd be 6k that we're losing. Okay? That happens at 49 or lower. All right? So now that first part where the maximum possible profit is unlimited, 
you can really start daydreaming, thinking this is, you know, when you buy a lotto ticket. The difference is when you buy a lotto ticket, it's only a dollar or two dollars, okay? And you have your 45-second fantasy of, boy, if I get, this is what I'm going to use with my money, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That doesn't, that doesn't really matter, okay? Um, what matters is you can lose that 6K, okay? That's pretty scary, okay? So you don't want that. You don't want to lose a 6K if it goes against you, and you don't want to lose unlimited if you're making short a call, all right? So I think you know where I'm going with this. We've got to figure out a way to mix that together, okay? Put it together, and it's going to have a lot more value. Okay, and here we have the uh, the 6K that we lose, right, at 49 or lower, right, right up there, be 49. Okay, and um, 51.50 is a break even, and then we see if it makes that up to 61.75. Look, we make almost 25K. That's terrific. That's great, and sometimes that happens. It doesn't happen that often. If you're trading. Unless you have an account that's just so massive that it doesn't really matter. Um, doesn't really matter, then you're, then you're uh, screwed, right? Okay? So that's, that's what the long call does for you. Okay, now we're going to do the diagonal spread. All right, now I know you have a lot of... Uh, Okay, so what we look at is how uh, okay. So once again, we start selling the twenty forty seven and a half calls at two fifty. Okay, and at the same time, we're buying twenty four of the March forty nine calls at two fifty. Okay, so. Different expiration cycle, okay, Feb versus March. Um, different strike price, 47.50 versus 49, okay. And on top of that, different quantity, okay. Why do we buy the four extras? Okay, it's because of the thing called delta, okay. The 47 and a half calls have a higher delta than the 49 calls. Okay. Um, first of all, they're going to go into the money quicker. All right. But and delta means if, for instance, this 250 call, if this has a delta of 40, okay, it's going to be at 290 after a dollar. Okay. And if the 49 call doesn't quite have that, um, let's say it has 35 delta, okay, that's going to be 285 after a dollar. Okay, so that only made 35 cents versus 40 cents. But we have four extras that that'll make up the difference. Okay. Maximum possible profit occurs at 47.50. Now, how often do you see probably occur when you're talking about a, a a trade. Almost never, right? Because it's very, well, when it's involving two different expiration cycles, two different um, volumes for the buy and the sell, and two different strike prices, that's why I come up with probably. What's at probably a 4750, okay? Now, um, when's the best time um, when's the best time, what, what's, what result do you want when you are, um, when you sell, when you sell that option, what do you want to have happen to it? Anybody? Exactly. Very good, John. You want it to expire at the short strike, okay? Why do you want it to expire at the short strike? Because it's worthless then, right? Okay. 
Yeah, so it, it because it's worthless. That's why you want it to go. Any option you sell, you want it to go out worthless. Any option you're long, you want it to go to infinity, right? Or as close to as you can if it happens to be a put, you want it to go. All right? So the ideal price for this would be, um, excuse me, 47.50 would be the ideal strike price. Okay. So right there, 47.50 because our short we want to go out worthless. Okay. So these Fed 47 and a half calls will go out worthless. Now if it's at 45, they also go out worthless. Remember we saw that graph before? We make that 5,000 no matter what. The problem is if this is at 45, then our 49 calls aren't going to be as worth as much as they are at 47.50. Okay, so that's uh, that's why it's the case. All right. So to the downside, our maximum loss is going to be a thousand dollars. Right. Okay. Um, and to the our Upside loss worse would be at forty nine bucks, okay. But if it starts going above forty nine, that's why the extra twenty four. So if this doubles in price, that's a better than forty seven and a half because we have that extra, okay. And this here's where the graph looks like, okay. Forty seven fifty we make about eighty five hundred bucks on it, okay. And then we start losing. See we lose to the downside our maximum thousand. Start losing, and then all of a sudden, boom! You know, at a certain point, um, we'll start making, okay? Because of the extra calls involved. Okay. Now here's a few examples that we can give you. All right. Sell to open 25 Apple. Uh, 119 calls at 206, okay? Buying the March 120 calls at 330, okay? Um, since these have a higher delta, as this went up, these started to acquire a higher delta than these, okay? So I had to make an adjustment on that, okay? So what I did was I bought the 110, 120 vertical call spread gave me more. So as this started going against me, because these started going up more rapidly than these, I had this to cancel it out and give me more to that upside. Okay? All right, so what did I do? As, it's, as time went by, remember these expire more quickly than these do. All right? The Fabs expire more rapidly than the Marches do. Okay? Because of that, um, the spread starts working, okay, because it hadn't gone too far out of our range, okay. So I took off a portion of the of the spread and made 440 bucks on it, okay. That's a nice piece of change, all right. And then it started to uh, m move away a little bit from that range. It started to um, head down a little bit below that. So I failed on the trade, okay? The, the rest of the initial trade, so I made uh, 364 on that end of the trade, okay? And I was still left with the, the three lot of the vertical spread I used to adjust my position, all right? Um, as time went by, in the money vertical spreads, as you know, tend to expand as long as they stay in the money. So even though the uh, price at which went down a little bit, the time was on my side for this as well. Okay, so a net gain of $864. All right. Um, so the total um, margin for this is about $3,500. Okay, and just in about nine days' time, made $864. Okay. You look at that over a year's period of time, that's a 913% annual percentage rate of return. Okay? 
You don't expect them all to be this good, work out this well. The, the, the thing is, it gives you a position where you can pivot off of. If it starts going one direction or another, you can react to it. OK? All right. Next one is the, we sold 20 of the Twitter Jam 36 calls at a buck 24, and we bought 20 of the Fed 37s at 256. Okay. Um, once again, this is a lower strike price option. Okay. Um, they're both out of the money when we started this. Okay. Um, um, but they're de since we bought and sold, the delta was equal on them. All right. Um, went by about four days. The decay started to work, and we took the spread off for um, 47 cents. Okay. It started out 32 cents, made a net gain of about 150 dollars. All right. Started to move. Started to run up. Move against us. Okay. Backed off a little bit. I was able to get out of the balance of it for only a 10 dollar gain. So over the period of time net gain of $160, all right? 277% um, annual rate of return, okay? Um, once again, you see these um, things claiming, well, you got 10,000 rate of return to this. If you can get something like this, this is terrific, okay? You What you want when you have your, you want to keep building you value your account up. And the way to do that without a lot of danger is to spread. Okay. And the last example I'm going to give you, um, buying 33, start up buying 33 April 80 calls at $1.77. Okay. Um, and we saw the more near-term March 79 calls that expire in uh, March 21st, okay? So there's a four-week differential in these calls, okay? Um, so just in a little over three or four days period of time, we were able to capture um, getting out of this. So it, uh, from a dollar to um, to dollar 25, so we gained about a hundred bucks on that one. Okay, um, dollar two we, we made again on this one. All right, uh, another net gain of a hundred dollars. All right, and then remember we're short these. Um, we, we started out being short the seventy nine called about the eighties. Uh, here we're just getting out of the position. Um, Okay, um, and we had to get out of got out of the last part for a two hundred fifty eight dollar loss. Okay, it broke out of the area that we were looking for. Okay, all right. So net loss of two hundred fifty eight dollars, total loss of fifty eight bucks. Okay, so we lost on this one. All right. How many people trading options have you ever had when you just buy an option, buy a call, buy a put? and you just lose everything, okay? That's what happens, okay? If you're just buying a call or just selling a call, either you make or you lose. If you're just buying options, you frequently lose everything you have. When you're spread, that doesn't happen, okay? Sam, you do spreads, you're smart, okay? That's a smart thing to do, all right? All right. Um, so I'm just going to do a uh, an example here. Before we, I do that example, I just want to tell you that uh, we're offering an on-demand webinar series, Options Trading 101 and Options Trading 201, um, six hours of option trading videos. All right. So uh, it's a great, great thing. I mean, it was only I'm trying to squeeze this in to a uh, little over, you know, half hour to 45 minutes. This, you get six hours. It's going to be much more in-depth, okay? So we'll just 
go to the example that we have here. Okay. So we're going to look at, uh, uh, first off, we're going to look at the The, May, uh, the April 83 and a half calls, okay, right here we see them, all right. They're 177 bid at 180, okay, 20, about a 24 implied volatility. The delta is a 50 delta. So write this down, these 83 and a half calls, okay. Fifty delta. Okay. 177, 180. All right. So we're looking to sell these. Okay. So we'll look to see what we can buy against that. First off, we're going to look at the April 24, which is a um, week later. See the bid asking these? 287, 315, 261, 279. We saw much earlier 81, 83, 2 cents. So we, so we want that kind of narrow bid ask. So if we have to make adjustments, um, get out of certain trades, we don't want to get. Eventually, there will be more open interest and those markets will get tighter. Okay? So we look at here. We look at these, much tighter, 91, 93, 57, 59, okay? So, we remember that delta was 50, okay? So, look at May, what could we do that's approximately that 50 delta, okay? How about these 85 calls here, all right? $3.03 three at 45 cents, at 45 delta, okay? So. Mark this down, the 85 strike, okay, 45 delta, all right. So we'll just take an example of what this looks like now. And we're going to create a spread, custom spread. Okay. All right, so there it is. Now we're going to have to adjust the delta because it's 45 and 50, all right. So we're going to look to sell 27 of these and buy 30 of these. And that's where our money is, right? That where we short it, the 83 and a half strike, okay, right there. So about 2,200 bucks we have to do, okay? Then we see Right, the price about gets under like a 81 and three quarters. We start to have trouble on the downside, and it gets about a little above uh, 85 and 85 and a half around there. We start to get in trouble. Okay, so these are positions you have to watch and look at, but it's it's things where you can uh, have something working in your favor. Okay, you're a beneficiary of that decay, but it's not like selling a straddle where you're a beneficiary of the decay that way. Okay, and these spreads are, you want, you go into it with a lot of an opinion of which way the stock's going to move. It's not like buying a call or buying a put. You can actually make money that way. I mean, as a professional trader, that's what they do. So why not be like a professional trader? That's what I've been doing for, you know, almost four decades now. Okay? So... That's the that's the way that's the route you want to go, okay? Now is uh, yeah. So so when I tell you about our 101 and 201, six one-hour videos. You control the pace. Watch at your leisure in your home or your office. Unlimited access to them, okay? In an option trading 101, you learn market fundamentals needed to start to start trading options. Okay. Basic option strategies such as long and short calls, puts, straddles, strangles, covered calls, and protective puts. In 201, we're going to get into a little more like what we're talking about today. Okay. But instead of um, 
half hour to 45 minutes, we're going to be, it's three hours worth, okay? So you get a massive mechanics of the multi-legged trades that professionals use. And why not mimic the professionals, okay? They wouldn't be professionals if they weren't making money, okay? So you're going to learn about vertical spreads, butterflies, things of that nature, okay? So to take advantage of it, just go right here, okay? That, uh, okay, right there. All right. Now, um, does anybody have any questions now on what we covered today? Okay. I'm actually using Option House. It's the old Trade Monster platform. That's one of the questions. They, when do you take the trade off? That's a good question. Um, the trade itself doesn't necessarily. Uh, great question, John. Trade itself doesn't necessarily have to be the exact um, saying. Uh, you can add to it. Like I added that vertical spread to it. So what you do, if it stays in that one range, there's no need for you to make an adjustment. Okay. So if it's the example I just gave you with Facebook, if it stayed in that 8350 range, you really just wait until all the decay is done. It's probably not going to do that. So you look around, maybe take a half off if it, it's profitable, if it starts moving away. Okay. Will there be coaching with the video series? The video series itself is just a, a can presentation, but it's it's a very detailed one. Okay, we do offer uh, mentoring though. Um, okay. All right. Okay. How do I know when is the right strike price to buy and, and in what month? Once again, uh, excellent question. Okay. Um, what you look at is you, you first look at what you can sell, okay? Usually you do something that's pure time based, so therefore it's something, you start out with something that's a little bit out of the money, okay? Um, and then after that, you look at something with a delta that's going to be somewhat in the ballpark. If it's not, then you adjust the volume of your um, options against it. Ideally, if the long option you have is going to be in existence when an event takes place. Okay. Okay. And Sam said trade is going against my spread. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that, Sam. Okay. Uh, Johnny also have you seem to need to babysit these. These are are not set and if we got it in type two. You do have to babysit them, but it's not the type of babysitting a trade where you, um, I think you really have to babysit if you just buy a call, okay, or buy a put or sell a put or, you know, any naked option trade you have to babysit way more than you do a spread because a spread, one side is moving against the other. What you have to babysit is just be aware if it gets outside that range. Set exits. Um, you could set exits, uh, but I'll be honest with you, a certain percentage gain or loss, that's not that how the professionals do it, okay? If you're constantly putting in percentage gains and losses before you start, one likelihood is at best you're going to be a break-even trader, okay? So you don't want to, it's a very, in, it's not a precise science, trading options. If it was, everybody would make the exact same amount of money. But it's better, it, just let the position tell you what to do, okay? Once you become a more knowledgeable trader, you learn about the Greeks and all that, that will help you a lot, okay? What are the liquid in, in, instruments that are, that are good for the strategy? Uh, well, Facebook, obviously, is the one I gave the example. Twitter is a terrific one. Apple, um, GLD, uh, Microsoft, um, Spiders, Diamonds. Um, QQQs. We actually at uh, Option Authority, we have a pr proprietary ranking system in terms of liquidity, one through six. 
And uh, the ones I just mentioned are six stars. There's several of them. Wells Fargo is another good one. Um, Oracle. So there's plenty of them out there. Um, can you use stops on spreads? Uh, you could, I guess. It's not something that I would recommend. Okay, I think you just you, you get an awareness because you don't necessarily have to exit a trade on mass like I showed you before. Remember when that one the example I gave you when it started moving up? So instead of getting out of the trade, I bought a vertical spread and that helped to soften the blow of it going up. And then when it started to come back down again, I peeled off the trade. So you don't have to have exits. Are they good when they have such low volatilities? Well, there's two sides to that question. Okay, um, they don't have particularly high volatilities. You're right, but then again, the likelihood of them moving outside of that range isn't as great either. So it's a give and take for both of them. Okay, does that answer your question? All right. Okay, is it bad to do these when, this is where Jeff's asking, is it bad to do these in a volatile marketplace? That would probably be the only time I would say you might want to think twice about doing this, okay, because you kind of want it within that range, but once again, it's all a matter of the adjustments you make. So even if it starts to pop out of that range, you can do it, okay? You can make that adjustment, all right? So... It's, uh, yeah, there's no set time for doing that, uh, for doing these. But if, like I said, if you want it to be volatile, not too volatile. All right. But the key thing for, any, for this type of strategy is because you probably are going to make adjustments. Um, what you want to do is have a liquid, have where the options are liquid, where the bid ass is tight, where the stock itself is really liquid. Okay, um, where you can um, trade your stock against that. So, what percentage of the time do you let your short option position expire worthless and then run with your long option? Um, you know, it's there's really no set percentage of time that you would do that. It's just how the circumstances dictate it, and usually when, in other words, when it's, get to the expiring option, what you can do is you can buy in that. You can either take the spread off, okay, and, and capture your profit. Another thing you can do is you could actually buy in that short, maybe it's down to five cents, and you could sell an option in the same month that you're long against it. So you could turn it into a straight vertical or a ratio spread or something like that. Or maybe uh, an expiration cycle in between the two. 